But if we're doing that, and it's a question about fairness that was raised by, by the Liberal members, well, then we need to have Don Guy come to committee. Absolutely. Now, I, I want to I tell you why. And if we look at the St. Albert Gazette, which I think is, uh, and they're publishing a uh, Canadian press article on 10 September 2024. And I want, and it's, this article is, uh, is titled... Carney interested in doing something, not being something, he says, of advisor role. That's the advisor role he has with uh, the Liberal Party. The Liberals called in, the, the, the Canadian press story says, the Liberals called in veteran strategist Don Guy to give his insights into how to mount a comeback and go up against Polyev as they prepare for an election year. And Don Guy is a founding partner of a company called GT & Co., which, unlike uh, uh, Ms. Burns' business, uh, they have a significant, significant federal lobbying practice. Notable clients, Loblaws. Ah, perhaps that's how they got that fridge money uh, from, uh, from the Liberals. <coughs> Loblaws, of course, owns Shoppers Drug Mart, uh, the Canada Bread Company, which, as we know, um, had to plead guilty or did plead guilty to price fixing uh, during a food price inflation and cost of living crisis. Um, CN Rail, uh, we know that uh, the, um, the concerns there that you know, caused a fracture in the confidence and supply agreement, the coalition with the NDP, um, the, government's, uh, uh, the government seemed to have got a real nudge uh, to, to get to binding arbitration, and, and one might wonder if that came from uh, Mr. Guy, who uh, is a federal lobbyist for CN Rail. And, um, but also Airbnb, which the Liberals and the NDP have both accused of making the housing crisis worse. These are the clients of the individual, Mr. Guy, who is a federal lobbyist who was speaking at the uh, taxpayer-funded Liberal caucus retreat. So let's, let's get real here. Let's talk about fairness. Let's have Mr. Guy come before committee, and he can sit next to Mr. Miss, Miss Byrne, because that's who the, the Liberals want to have come to committee. Now, Mr. Guy employs um, the former director of caucus services and operations for the Liberal Research Bureau, a five-year tenure uh, Miss DeWolf had, as well as uh, other connected, uh, well-connected liberals. As uh, Mr. Guy, um, also as the owner of Polera, he employs Dan Arnold. Dan Arnold, also a fixture at taxpayer-funded liberal caucus retreats. This is Don Guy, the federal lobbyist, who sits in the room with the, the prime minister, his cabinet, his caucus, these, these liberal members behind closed doors advising them um, and representing his clients simultaneously, his clients being Airbnb, who the liberals have said made the housing crisis work, CN Rail, the Canada Bread Company, who pled guilty of, of uh, price fixing, and Loblaws. Whew. Like, I... I think that if we're getting fair, let's get fair. Let's, let's get fair and let's have him come before the committee. Now, along with Mr. Guy, we should include Brian Topp. He is the co-founding partner of GT and Co. And let's talk about, again, all of those examples that I gave about federal lobbying that's done by that company. Companies who have pled guilty of price fixing, companies the Liberals have accused of exacerbating the, the uh, housing crisis in our country, companies that they've accused of, of gouging consumers. So, but, but who is Mr. Topp? Now, Mr. Topp is a noted New Democrat, former chief of staff to, uh, to Rachel Notley. And... He's got, these, he's, he's got these connections. He employs, he is the employer of that same 
former Liberal Research Bureau director, responsible for caucus services and operations. So Top and Guy should be sitting in seats 15 and 16, and we can save seat 17 for Miss Byrne, and then in seat 18, we should have Gurten Singh come, because we know that, that the NDP leader has said that uh, he has him on his arm for media scrums and for advice, and that he's a lobbyist for Metro. Right. Metro, which, which barely gets a mention from the NDP leader when he's talking about grocery, uh, gro grocery giants. I it's funny. Why. It's funny. I wonder why we don't hear mention of, much mention of, of Metro. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's highly suspicious indeed. Some might say. <laughs> and so we, we want to see Top and Guy and Singh and Miss Byrne. The difference, of course, with Miss Byrne is that she's the only one who's not a federal lobbyist. But they want to have her and they want it to be fair. So let's be fair and let's have them come here. And they can all appear on a panel together. But there's an important, there's a couple important points in this motion. And that's that these individuals don't come before the committee. The, the, the invitations not, are not to be furnished to them until we've had Mr. Carney appear. Right. Because Mr. Carney's ducked committees before and that's not acceptable that we, that we don't have him come first. But if we're going to have the conversation about federal lobbying, we can, have, uh, we can, we can deal with the many issues with, uh, with the many conflicts of interest with carbon tax Kearney, questionable practices with respect to lobbying. How, how did Brookfield get in the mix for what's going to be very lucrative time? How, how is it that their stock price hit six-month highs when one of their subsidiaries, the largest private mortgage insurer in Canada, is going to benefit from a, a liberal government announcement? And all of these things happened. His, his buddy at Telesad getting a $2 billion loan to... Um, for satellite internet services that doesn't have any satellites and isn't providing any internet service. Um, how, did, how did all of that good fortune land on all these people who are, just happen to be connected to Mr. Carney in the hours that the, the ink's just drying on, on his agreement to become the de facto finance minister after Justin Trudeau's uh, PMO said they didn't have confidence in Christian Freeland, the finance minister and deputy prime minister? How did that all come to happen? What did Mr. Carney have to give up for that? Well... We've seen that he's now sending out fundraising letters for the Liberals. We, it, so we hope to have support. We hope to have support from other members. We wanted to talk about fairness. This is fair. We're saying that the conservative that's been suggested, um, that she ought to appear uh, alongside the federal liberal lobbyists who've, who've, who've been in the who've been in the halls of power, who've been in the rooms behind closed doors when decisions are getting made, when, when strategy is being charted for, uh, for the government and for their coalition partner. That's, that's incredibly important. So when we have someone like the chair of, of Brookfield Global, this, this trillion-dollar arch-capitalist-everything company, we, we hope that we can, we can do whatever it takes. We can, we can count on the NDP to do what it takes to bring Mr. Carney here to answer questions, answer for how he's enriching his friends in exchange for raising money for the Liberals. And we hope that the, the issue of fairness that was raised by the Liberal members, that that's been addressed here. So, so let's see, let's see, uh, top guy, Singh, and we can have Ms. Byrne alongside them, though she's not a federal lobbyist and, and they do federal lobbying. Okay. I think there was a concern that they were going to appear for less time than Mr. Carney. And I think that's addressed as well. We'll have that, that panel for two hours. And this panel is going to occur after that invitation. Those invitations will be sent out after Mr. Carney comes. The, the most important thing isn't about protecting, uh, protecting uh, people who share the party affiliation. It's about accountability and transparency. It's about restoring Canadians' confidence. So let's put it plainly. 
We want carbon tax carny here. And uh, we think that the poison, the poison pill the Liberals think they put forward about, about having uh, Ms. Byrne come, we'll, we'll make sure that the invitation is, uh, is, is, is hand-delivered. Will they do the same to their strategists? To the NDP, will they do the same to their strategists? Let's see. Let's see who's interested in fairness and accountability for Canadians and, and who's actually looking to circle the wagons and, uh, and protect their <coughs> insiders who've had that privileged access behind closed doors while lobbying for, for uh, their federal clients. Um, let's see the, 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 the opportunities here for, for everyone. They just need to reach out and take it.